There's a fish. I landed on a fish. That's fish. There we go. What's up y'all, welcome to today's video. I'm out at a little pond that I enjoy fishing. Um, I kind of looked back at videos from last year to see what I was doing and I caught fish here. Uh, this time last year. Um, and I'm gonna try and do the same thing, catch some fish. So what we've got today, I've got my jig and worm rod set up with a black and blue jig. And uh, it's actually, it's got a rattle in it. I don't know if you could even hear that, but We've got a black and blue chatterbait today. So basically I'm fishing a pretty dirty pond. Um, we're gonna need to stand out a good bit today if we wanna get bit, but it is the morning time. It is about, it is 6.47, okay? And I'm about to start fishing. These fish should be decently active. I don't know uh, what's going on. I haven't fished this place in a while, but I know that there's decent fish in here and they're not super hard to catch. So let's go ahead, start fishing, and see what we can do. All right. Start fishing. I'm gonna start with the chatterbait so I can just cover ground, see if there's any kind of reaction bait going on. We're throwing it on my Shimano Curado uh, 200 HG, um, on my Abu Garcia Veritas Tournament Edition. Um, this is a medium heavy action rod, and I kinda just want something seven foot, medium heavy, so that I've got some backbone to set the hook on that chatterbait, but also some flex so I can make some good casts and uh, get some good distance on this cast as well. We're just gonna be slow rolling this guy around. Hopefully that black and blue combined with the vibrations from the chatterbait will equal a bass finding my lure and eating it. All right, when I've covered kind of the area with the chatterbait, I'll probably just pick up the jig in each spot. This is, let's see, it's a Strike King jig that I found. I think it's like a hybrid jig, but I hope you can hear that rattle. And then I've got this Berkeley chunk trailer on the back. I've never really used a chunk kind of trailer for uh, my jigs, but figured, hey, what's wrong with the little, little scent, that Berkeley power scent, you know what I'm saying? And I've got this on my Daiwa Tatula um gomex is handles those are nice and then the g loomis gcx jig and worm rod it's a seven foot one uh fast action rod it is a beef stick and when i'm working this i'm gonna keep it on the bottom but kind of just make sure i'm making that jig rattle so probably pop the tip shake the tip a lot just kind of hop it along like it's a little crawfish Right now, I just kind of want to hit this corner and then we'll probably move along. I've seen some fish activity down there, um, but I'll pull the jig out when I see some cool structural spots. Um, you know, trees that are hanging over the water like this once the sun is up. Cast down this wall. Okay, let's keep moving, see if we can find some fish out here. There's a fish. There we go. All right, nice one. Nothing giant, but chatterbait eater. And always good, it's a good fish. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Get on the bank. Woo! Look at that. Chatterbait chunk black and blue that's what i'm talking about y'all that didn't take too long at all i kind of fished my first spot walked down the bank a little bit Urgh, he's pinned got that out walked down the bank a little bit made just a couple of casts and he was on it one of that chatterbait 
that's a beautiful fish look how like light color kind of white they get when they're living in the dirty water so interesting but fat stocky he's got a bit of a a weird spot on his tail there i don't know if you can see that very well but e hope it's not a disease let's get him back in the water all right there you go little dude there he goes all right first fish of the day plan is kind of coming together you know it's not taking too too long and the fish are biting but We've got a small window of the sun not being up, so we got to get another line in the water, keep fishing. All right, first fish down. I was just throwing over uh, towards that concrete wall. Seems like this little, this bend right here, this little pocket, it, it'll hold a fish every now and then. I always got to fish it when I come though. So. Well, that gets me excited. It gives me hope. You know, summer can beat you down. Don't know if it's worth it being out here or not until you got to come out here and find out is the thing. But hopefully we can put together three or four, maybe five catches today in a short amount of time. This just broke the surface there. Don't know if it was a bass. But I'm seeing activity, which is a great sign compared to, you know, some of the other times I've been fishing recently. Okay, I like this spot. There's these two different corners here that usually, well, I don't want to say usually, but I've caught fish in both these corners before. This is right before water spills over into the pond I've been fishing. So this is kind of where, like, the second pond starts, but this corner... They just kind of like stack up in it sometimes. They must have some structure or something. They just like the walls where they meet and all that. But we do have a funky green something on the water today that I don't know. I don't know what to feel about. About this time, sometime in the summer last year, we were having a lot of fish kills the same time that this stuff was showing up in some of the ponds. And I didn't know if it was like a toxic algae bloom or not, but it's back. <laughs> Let my chatterbait sink for like one second. I got the dadgum fountain. <sighs> Made a cast and I went to go adjust my, uh, the brakes on my reel. So I didn't get a backlash next time. And of course, it wasn't worth it. On the rope, so maybe it'll come off. Oh, did not. <clears throat> well, it's a good thing that uh, chatterbaits, especially black and blue, are one of those things that I've uh, amassed quite a few of them during my time so i've got backups for the backups and we are ready to tie one up and get back to what we were doing just gonna hit him with a polymer knot real quick get it around there and before you pull the polymer knot tight make sure you wet the knot all right and we are ready to roll again i landed on a fish Bounce it off the wall. <laughs> right into a fish's mouth. Wow. Fish number two on the black and blue chatterbait. This one is uh, a lot smaller than that first fish, but a good fish and a good fight nonetheless. Healthy. Uh, that short and stubby build that they got. Chatterbait just fell out. I mean, I couldn't imagine he had it too good the way he ate it just boinked it off the wall and he was on it beautiful fish they're just they're just pale not a lot of markings on them pretty fish let's get him back in the water thank you for eating my man Woo! okay we're kind of like putting something together here y'all uh two fish and i mean it's been like 45 minutes but you grind out here in the summer and uh this is good this is good we've got some cloud cover so i'm not getting hit by the sun yet um i'm i'm loving this so we've got about another half of these ponds to fish um i've come down like one side almost now 
These tunnels are going to be fun. I love throwing at the tunnels, um, but then I've got a whole other half to fish, and then I'll probably just head out after one lap. But we're about halfway done, so let's keep on rolling. All right, if any of y'all are wondering about my chatterbait in the trailer, I'm just throwing a black and blue Z-Man original chatterbait. And then my trailer is a black and blue 10,000 fish Yodo worm. These things just have like a little tickle tail. It gives a, just a bulky body. Um, in clear water, that tickle tail looks amazing. I don't really know about dirty water, but I think that it just works so well with the chatterbait. I love the action it gives off. So I use the black and blue. I use them for like all of my trailers for chatterbaits pretty much. All right, let's get down in here. See, there's a good place to stand. That's a fish. There we go. Chatterbait bite today. There we go. Another one. Fish number three on that chatterbait. Look at them. Cookie cutter bass. And they hungry today. <laughs> oh, it's good to find some active summertime bass in these ponds. That gets me excited. Let's go. Thank you so much, my man. Back into the, the chalky milk. Y'all, we're, uh, we're catching fish. We got three. If we can get five, that'd be crazy. I'd be back here a lot. Remember, if you want to know the location to every video that I fish, check out my channel membership option, the Pond Hopper's Guide to DFW. If you become a member of that, I will give you access to the location of every video I post on YouTube. So check that out. I have a link in the description. Let's catch some more bass. Turning out to be a pretty good little morning out here. I always wonder how big the bass are in here because I catch so many in the like two pound range, but I don't really, I have never caught anything over like four pounds out of here, I don't think. Caught a few threes, but a lot of like two or high one pounders. Let's get jiggy with it. one on the jig dang it it's probably just a little guy but getting bit makes me feel good all right let's fish these tunnels a little bit Okay, so a few things about summer bass fishing are starting to come back to me now. When you're fishing these ponds, I'm starting to remember that ponds are different with the different seasons of the year. A good spring pond doesn't mean it's gonna be a good summer pond, winter pond. So I gotta find my summer ponds. I think this is one of them. I, I would consider that good. I think we can do even better there, honestly. Um, we caught all our fish on the black and blue chatterbait, had one bite on the jig, but honestly, I wanna come back, throw the BFS, the mini chatterbait, the micro one. We might catch even more fish. I've got that one in black and blue and white, so I might do that soon. Um, also, beating the sun, guys. Um, whether that's getting up early or we've got early and overcast today. The overcast helped a ton. So I was able to stay out here a little longer. Um, it's not too terribly hot right now in Texas. Uh, a few days from now, in the middle of the week, we're gonna be having 103, 104 highs. Right now, it's probably like a 95 high. Um, and it feels pretty decent out here. Had a little breeze helping me out. A lot of times, it's just gotta be tolerable enough for you to stay out here long enough to catch fish. Um, but when it does get really hot in the middle of the day, the fish are not gonna be very active. So, find your spots, find the lures that work at those spots. Look for some really grassy spots to throw frogs in the summer. That's a big tip I have. Um, other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button for me, uh, support the channel, leave a comment, and subscribe if you have not subscribed already. That way you won't miss out on any future Texas bass fishing action. Remember, if you want to know the location to every 
video I post, check out my membership options. With all that being said, y'all, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.